Welcome to the Three Point Podcast with Nate and Moorhead. And then the third point here that we're going to discuss, and I really want to hear your thoughts on this, is how that creativity can come through cultivation. First off, maybe explain what that means and what that looks like, and then put some legs to it as far as how we'll see that play out in our churches. Well, cultivation um, is spelled W-O-R-K, work. It's about digging things out. Um, But really, to make it simple for us, Nate, it's what you and I have talked about for years and years to the point that uh, your kids and my daughter have quoted it back to us. And I'll never forget you telling me about Olivia. And she said, you said, where did that come from, Dad? And she said, well, you know, it came from the reservoir. And so uh, reservoir, that's what cultivation is. It is about having something in the tank, something in reserve. And um, you guys do tease me about the the tarp and all of that and I should have had it with me but I have a bucket upstairs that I bring with me everywhere I go and at any point in time anything can happen and I have been I walked into a church uh, I was just there to visit and I honestly I'm going to be honest okay I'm going to be transparent I'm going to put it all up normally I lie but I'm not going to lie right yeah. now I, I'm just going to be real transparent I got there at 10 15 at this church because I was afraid the pastor was going to ask me to preach and so I got there at 10 15 worship had already started he came off the platform and said brother Moorhead I would love for you to preach today We have Indiana Bible College here, and there's an extra 50 guests, and we would just love for you to preach today. And you know what happened? I preached because I had my iPad because I knew anything can happen. I've walked in, uh, I was at one guy's church, and I was there for five days. uh, No, yeah, doing a BBS. He asked me, to do seven additional things while I was there. And um, I walked in, he said, hey, I would love for you to speak to our leadership team. I said, I would love to, man. When when do you want me to do that? They're in the leadership room right now. If you wouldn't mind stepping in there and you know, just 15, 20 minutes from your heart. And so I went right in there and started talking uh, we were walking down the hall. He said, you know that what you were telling me about um, at the restaurant last night? I would love for you to step in my office. My youth pastor's in there. I'd love for you to share that concept with him. It just happened constantly. So I have a bucket that's full of Sharpie markers and, and tarps and all kinds of stuff because i um, constantly asked to do things. So... Um, a lot of our big corporations, Google and different things, they have what's called free for all Friday. And they are allowed to work on anything that's not on their to-do list. So Fridays, they their job on Friday is to surf the net and find articles about whatever. It's about finding Um, websites. It's about finding thoughts and ideas. It's not about doing their work. It's about creating a reservoir on Friday that they can then use Monday through Thursday. And then every Friday they go back and they fill up their reservoir. And so um, just having those points of time where you're constantly reading, you're pulling articles, you're, um, you know, now I know Nate has a financial guy, so I'm going to make a note of that, in, uh, lady, in case that I need that, and I know he's got a graphics person from Chicago in case I need that, and I know that uh, Rick Rogers, he, he's got building stuff if I need that, and, and 
just we know where these are and then when crisis comes we can go to the bucket and we have something that is ready for us to use yeah one of the one of the valuable life lessons that i learned um over the years is when it comes to creativity to not force the issue and the reason i say that this is a life lesson is because some people just aren't creative, okay? So don't ask them to be creative. Don't require them to be creative. They're they're great uh, doers, they're great workers, um, but creativity may not be their gifting. So don't force the issue. There's going to be you may have to have two groups. You may have to have a, a creative group and then you may have to have another group that does all the crazy things that the creative people come up with because a lot of times the, the creative people they're not going to be the ones that want to do the work they just love coming up with ideas now obviously the sweet spot is when you can have creative people that aren't afraid to back it up with a little work ethic as well um but take every situation every group every team it, it's going to have different strengths and we got to play to those strengths and so we of course would be uh remiss throughout all of these three points we've made about creativity to not um include really um just the the underlying theme of all of this is really let's let's do this through the the power of the the holy spirit let's allow the lord to lead us and to truly to truly know and understand yeah there's creativity and crisis in collaboration and in cultivation but also probably the most important thing that we could do is to create a culture and an environment where there's creativity through our relationship with the Lord. And so whatever the meeting, whatever the scale, uh whatever the context to make sure uh, that we are leading um with that in mind as well is that God is uh inspiring us and leading us. So give us some closing thoughts, wrap this up um and just kind of cover us here with this creative um approach to our relationship with the Lord. Well, ultimately creativity comes through Christ. And so let me give you a quick three-pointer inside the three-pointer of the three-pointer. Uh number 1 is time alone. And if you see uh Christ, you see that he took time alone, that he uh pulled away from the crowd to have um an opportunity to recharge. And so uh we need to have our quiet times we need to have our devotions and when we are connected to Christ when we're in those crises then we're going to have that reservoir where things are going to come um secondly and, and you've mentioned this too is time with strangers uh time with different people than us and you find that Jesus um he spent time with strangers he he spent time with people that was not like him and my wife and I you know we we've been talking about this recently that uh we like to be around people that are like us that are you know positive and happy and think the way we do and but uh there's people that are not like us but they still have a lot to offer the kingdom and a lot to offer and so we have to find a way to make that happen and uh when you're around people this crisis um my pastor started out by doing all of the videos and mixing everything and then we find out there's this guy playing the guitar and he is an amazing video editor and th- the last two services he has done all of the mixing and videoing and everything for all of the the songs and I didn't even know that talent existed. Pastor knew it was there, but we had no idea it was as great as it is. And so in the middle of a crisis, there's somebody that will raise their hand and say, "Hey, I can do that." Um again, resources just fill my mind, but Andy Stanley says that a person can only juggle three balls at a time and three main responsibilities at once. And he said what happens is when you take on that fourth you're going to wobble them for a while but then eventually you're going to drop one. But he said there's always somebody in the wings 
ready and excited for you to drop that ball because they're like, oh, I have been waiting for that ball to drop. Let me take that and go with it. And the problem is most times you don't know until you drop the ball and you have to intentionally drop some balls so some people can be creative and get involved in the process and then see unusual places. Uh, Jesus went to weird places. He went to whales and cities he wasn't supposed to be in just because that's who he is. And we have to change our patterns, which obviously this crisis has changed a lot of our patterns. And we have to be able to go to different places, um, maybe go to different chat rooms, go to different things to get our mind thinking that we normally wouldn't do. And so that we can have new thoughts, new connections with Christ and read different authors, go to different websites, listen to different preachers that we're normal, normally listening to so that our mind can be changed and refreshed. Awesome. Well, this was uh, surely to come and uh, here we are uh, just four episodes in or two episodes in and here we are already we've dropped it was the three point podcast but i think we went for 27 we gave them a good old step curry uh, we have a lot three. of points yeah yeah we have a lot uh, of we points we i'm gonna accuse you of running up the score tonight so uh but this is great and hopefully this will let everybody that's participating and being a part um just to to think and to think outside the box to think creatively and uh, to just go with it. So awesome. Well, we appreciate uh, your time, bro. Thank you for um, hooking up with me tonight. And uh, we'll recap some of this here in the future. And thank you for listening to the Three Point Podcast with Nate and Moorhead.